Hello friend, I'm Rich Stocks. This is the Healthy Christian Broadcast. Today I'm continuing my teaching on the missing ingredient in tithes and offerings. Stay there, I'll be right back. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. We are proclaiming God and His Word as the one source of spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. Now, here's Rich. Good things come from the Father of light. Hello friend, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our Healthy Christian YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos, it's free to subscribe, and if you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new video. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites for our friends and partners for nutrition and wellness. We have mineraldoctor.com for weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's Word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week we hear from people and they're hungry for the Word of God and this is made possible through people just like you. The Bible teaches that we are to sow into the ministries that we receive from. So if you're receiving from this ministry, I want to invite you to become one of my partners. We have a video on our website called Becoming a Business Partner with God. The web address is richstocks.org. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. Hello everyone. For many months I've been teaching on the subject of true financial freedom. We are hearing from people. They're enjoying this. We're especially hearing from those in Africa. And let me tell you, they need to hear it. We all need to hear it, but they need to hear it. One of the things I've been accused of, I've been in the ministry for 40 years and I believed when I first heard, I heard about the prosperity message the night before I got married. What? What a great time, guys. I mean, get a clue. That is the Lord giving you a clue. And uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland, uh, we were at a church. We were there simply to do our rehearsal for our wedding. Our wedding was going to be the next night, and they were having a satellite seminar. This was many, many years ago. I'm older than I look, by the way. And so we're just waiting... I, I had just come into this faith walk and I was excited, but I did not reject the prosperity message, but I'd never had any debts. Now, I came from a poor family, but I worked, uh, you know, as, as a preteen and a teenager, and I always had plenty of money for myself. And so I didn't know we were poor. Looking back now, we were poor. But I didn't know it, and I had money, you know, not just rolling out of my pockets, but I, I was fine. If I wanted a new guitar, you know, I'd go buy it because I worked jobs, worked in the summer, and those sorts of things. But the night before my wedding, and we just wanted to hurry up and get over. They're having a satellite seminar. Well, we're wanting it to get over so we can have our rehearsal. We're going to get married the next night. <laughs> And Brother Copeland, Kenneth Copeland, I didn't know him very well. I meant I had embraced the message on health and healing. I had embraced the message on the baptism with the Holy Spirit and speaking with other tongues. But the prosperity message, I was very indifferent. Now, I wasn't like some of the people that I hear from, critics, the Judas Iscariots of the world. But I didn't have any debts. I didn't have any financial responsibility. So I just, I did not see the value of teaching about money in church. I wasn't against it. I just thought, why are we doing this? Let's talk about healing the sick and casting out devils and those sorts of things. Well, I didn't realize that I'm about to the next day. <laughs> the night before you get married, guys, there is no better time to hear about the prosperity message, about what God has to say about money, because now your life's going to change. You're probably going to have a family of your own soon, and we did. Three kids, one right after another, one one year, one the next year, one the next year. We was married for about a year, and then, you know, my wife got pregnant, so a year later. So we had about a year of marriage with no kids, and then... There came one, then another, then another, and then 
a few years in between, and we had our fourth, and I said, God, thank you for these four, <laughs> and no more, please. But anyway, just a little side joke there. But man, the night before, you're going to get married, and God gives you a word, and here's what Brother Copeland said. I write about it in my book, by the way. If you don't have this book, you ought to get it, Seven Reasons Why God Wants You to Have Money. This is a really good book. I wrote it a long time ago. I'm not going to show you the picture on the back. I look younger. Um, you're going to tell it was written a long time ago, but I write about this story. They're having this prosperity seminar. I'm ready for it to get over so we can have our wedding rehearsal. And Brother Copeland, he says... He shouts out, he says, if all you need's a dollar a week, pray for a hundred and give 99 away. And something inside of me changed. And I've never been the same with how I view Bible prosperity, with how I view material prosperity. I have never thought about it the same since that day, the night before I was to get married the next day. If all you need's a dollar a week, he said, ask God, pray for a hundred, and give 99 away. Man, was that a life-changing statement. And people wonder why I like the man. That's the reason right there. Life-changing. Your life can change. You could hear one thing on this broadcast or from any other man or woman of God one word from God can change your life forever. Well, we took some time with that, but I'm not taking it back. Let's review. We've been talking about the tithe. What is the Lord's tithe? It's a tenth. Whose is the Lord's tithe? It is the Lord's. When did tithing begin? It began before time began. Why? Why? The why of tithing. What is the purpose of the Lord's tithe? Numbers 18.21, it is for God's ministers. Where do we bring the tithe? To those who minister to you the Word of God. How do we present our tithes and offerings to the Lord? That's what we're looking at. We saw in Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 through 7, Cain and Abel were bringing offerings to God there in the Garden of Eden. God accepted Abel and his offering. He rejected Cain and his offering. He told us why. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. That, my brother and sister, is the missing ingredient in so many tithes and offerings today. If you're not bringing your tithe in faith, God is not pleased. You say, can you prove that? Yes. Hebrews 11, verse 6 tells us the definition of faith. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you can't please God <clears throat> no matter how much you're giving. You can give 50% of your income. You can give 90% of your income. You can give it all. And if you're not giving it in faith, same way with your tithe. We talked about in another lesson, well, in the last lesson, the difference between faith and obedience. Faith always obeys God. But not all obedience is in faith. How do you know? Because of this verse, Hebrews 11, verse 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that He is and. Here's the part that so many people are missing out of. And faith believes God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. What did He tell Abraham? When Abraham tithed to Melchizedek, and then in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, it says, after these things, after what things? After the big battle and the big spoil and God, and, Ab and Abraham brought this huge tithe. Percentage-wise, they're all equal, by the way. There are no big tithes and little tithes. But for the purpose of this teaching, it was a large sum of money and spoils and cattle and gold and silver that he brought to the priest, Melchizedek. Man, gave it all to one man, mind you. And it says, after these things, the Lord appeared to Abraham in a vision, and he said, fear not, Abraham. He said, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. The New King James, the footnote says, your reward shall be very great. Why? 
Why is his reward going to be very great? Because those are the blessings associated with the tithe. Divine protection, divine provision. God said the same thing to his people in Malachi. He said, put me to the test and see if I will not do these two things. Here are the two blessings of the tithe. He said, see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Divine provision, divine protection. Guys, I claim, I claim this the blessing of the tithe, I claim it every day of my life. Not just in the financial realm, but he also said, not only will I pour you out blessing, he said, we've talked about this in lessons past, divine protection. I remind the Lord, Lord, I am a tither. And I believe there are two blessings, maybe many more specific blessings associated with the tithe. The ones he told Abraham and the ones that he told the people here in the book of Malachi chapter 3. He told Abraham, I'm your shield, divine protection. I'm your exceeding great reward. There's the financial blessing. The people in Malachi, I'll pour you out a blessing. There's your financial blessing. He's going to pour it out. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer. What's the devourer? That could be anything or anyone that's devouring your health, your peace, your joy, your family, your finances. God, through your tithe, you rebuke the devourer. God rebukes the devourer for your sake through your tithe because it is forever connected with the tithe. It is one of the blessings of bringing the Lord His tithe. But we saw... God rejected Cain in his offering. He accepted Abel, and we saw why in the book of Hebrews, because Abel, it said, by faith he gave a better offering. Then we saw in Malachi chapter 3, verse 14, there are good tithers and bad tithers. You say, Brother Ridge, that's crazy. Well, read the book of Malachi chapter 3, the third chapter of Malachi. The entire chapter is about tithing. It's not about the other hundreds of commandments under the law. He's not talking to them about the law. He's talking to them about the tithe. And in Malachi chapter 3.14, it says, here's what some of the people said. They said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept His ordinance? Now, I want you to notice. First of all, what ordinance are they talking about? The ordinance in this chapter is the tithe. He's not talking about any other ordinance. The tithe, tithes and offerings. And they said, what profit is it that we've been tithing? Question, had they been tithing? Yes. They admitted here in Malachi 3.14, they had kept the ordinance of tithing. These were tithers. But now they're questioning they're saying, what profit is it? We've kept the tithe. I said this last time. I'm going to say it again today. There are people watching me right now. You have questioned. You've said to your spouse, why? I don't understand why. We're tithers. I don't understand why we're not more blessed, that we're not seeing greater blessing. I do understand why. That right there, you, that is called doubt. Questioning, not asking questions, but questioning the provision of God, the promises of God, the blessing of God. Question it is doubting it. That is doubt. Doubt is questioning God. That's the opposite of faith. Faith expects God's reward. Hebrews eleven six. 6, you must believe God is and He's a rewarder. If you're going around saying out of your mouth like these people, yes, I've been tithing, that's obedience, but that is not faith. Obedience alone is not faith. Obedience alone is not faith. Faith will always obey, but obedience alone is not faith. You, I know people right now who tithe. And they are generous givers. But they think what I'm teaching is heresy. Brother Rich is teaching people that when you give, you should expect to get. Yes, absolutely. And it's not Brother Rich teaching it. This is what <laughs> Brother Jesus, our elder brother, Jesus. Do you know Jesus was your elder brother? 
He is the firstborn among many brethren, the first begotten from the dead. Your elder brother Jesus taught this in Luke 6.38, Give and it shall be given. Men will give to your bosom. Well, men can't give spiritual blessings to your bosom. Your bosom is your pouch, your wallet, your bank account. It's material blessing. And for you to go around and, and telling people, well, we're supposed to give and expect nothing in return is a lie. You, you give to men, you, you don't expect that person you give to to give to you because then it's not a gift. Then they owe you something, but you do expect men to give to your bosom. Big difference. And for you to not expect it is calling Jesus a liar and God is not pleased with your tithes and offerings and He does not receive them. But it also goes on to say in Malachi chapter 3, those that feared the Lord, they got together and started talking about these things, talking about the blessing. And it says there was a book of remembrance written about them. I like the message. It says this, Then those whose lives honor God got together. This is Matthew, or I'm sorry, this is Malachi chapter 3. And this is verse 16 and 17 in the message. I like this guy. Then those whose lives honored God got together and talked it over. What? The blessing that God just talked about. The blessing associated with the tithe. It says, And God saw what they were doing and He listened in. A book was opened in God's presence and minutes were taken of the meeting. What an imagination this guy has. That's probably how it happened. It says, and with the names of the God-fearers written down. Notice he didn't write down the names of all the tithers. He did not write down the names of those who were tithing. They said, Lord, we've kept your, we've kept your ordinance of tithing, but we're not seeing any benefit. We're not seeing the profit. Some of you have been saying that, and you have closed the windows of heaven. Why? Because you are not expecting faith. Yes, Lord, I'll say faith always has positive expectation. Faith is not just trusting God in a general sense. Faith is believing something specific God has said in His Word. You do not have faith in God unless you have faith in the Word of God. I have faith in God because I have faith in something God has said. I'm trusting God when I'm trusting something God has said. Don't water it down. I've heard well-known ministers, good ministers. Well, faith is just trusting them. They say it like they're belittling, like we're making too big of a deal. You can't please God without it. It's not just trusting God. It's believing something. Go a little further with that. It is trusting God, but be more specific. It is trusting something God has said, something God has promised in his word. Notice what this says here. It says that those, their names were written down, not the ones who were questioning, not the ones who were saying, what profit is it? The ones who were discussing the blessing. And it says, they'll get special treatment when I go into action. <laughs> wow. Do you want special treatment in this world? Let me tell you, the world is falling apart at the seams. The economy is falling apart. It doesn't matter who gets in office. It does matter, but the world is still coming apart at the seams. One party might be a little better than the other, so on and so forth. But I am telling you, God is shaking this world. He's going to shake all nations, and that's exactly what's happening. No matter who's in office, yes, go vote. Vote for the person that lines up most closely with the Word of God. But ultimately, they are not your source. Those people in Washington, D.C. or wherever, whatever nation you're watching me in, those government leaders, yes, pray for them, vote, pray, but they are not our source. They do not determine our economy. We are part of a different economy. We are not subject to the economy of this world, the beggarly elements of this world, because we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Jesus has been appointed heir of all things, and I am a joint heir with Him. That means I am a co-equal heir. That means I have an equal share of everything that Jesus has, and He is Lord of all. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and I am a joint co-equal heir of the earth and the fullness thereof. And so are you, my brother and sister. If you are a believer in Jesus, everything is already yours. Well, why aren't I seeing it yet? Why am I not seeing those blessings yet? I own a piece of property, a rental property. I said this the last two or three lessons. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. How do I know it's mine? Because my name's on the deed. 
and I pay taxes on it. Praise God. But how do I know it's mine? My name's on the deed. How do you know the earth is yours and the fullness thereof? Because your name is on the title deed. One translation says regarding faith, faith is the title deed to the thing you're hoping for. Your faith is the title deed to your prosperity, my brother and sister. Everything in this earth is the Lord's and because you're an heir of God, it is already yours. You don't have to covet after wealth. You don't have to seek after wealth. Seek first the kingdom of, his, of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Why? Because they're already yours. They are Yours, all the wealth of this world belongs to you. The spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13 says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. How did God know? How did God know that the people in Malachi chapter 3 were not tithing in faith because of the words of their mouth? How does God know whether or not you are tithing in faith because of what's coming out of your mouth? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth is the place where the abundance, the overflow of the heart, where does it overflow? It overflows out of your mouth. So if you're bringing tithes and you're bringing God offerings, and yet, but yet you're saying out of your mouth, I I just don't understand where the blessing is. Where is the blessing? You are not bringing those tithes and offerings in faith. That is the missing ingredient in tithes and offerings. And without that, God is not pleased and He does not receive your tithe. He does not receive your offering no matter how large it is if you do not bring it in faith. And Hebrews 11.6 says that faith believes in God's reward. <laughs> that was quite a mouthful, was it not? Faith believes and expects God reward. No expectation, no reward. Listen to this in Hebrews 4 verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word of God preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Hebrews chapter 4. The, when the word of God is preached to you, you have to mix faith with faith with it. Obedience is not enough. There's a lot of preaching and teaching about obedience. Obey, obey, obey. Yes, you need to obey. Faith will always obey. But not all obedience is faith. You can obey and God still not be pleased with your obedience if it's not in faith. If you're not obeying, expecting God's reward. If you are obeying God in your tithes, but you're not expecting the reward, the blessing associated with the tithe, God is not pleased. He rejects those tithes and offerings. You will not see the blessing. And how do you know? Because the spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13, the spirit of faith speaks whatever it believes. And if you're saying, I just don't understand why it's not working. I had someone one time said, I didn't say that. I said, yes, you did. I said, okay, I've been doing what you said. How come my, they had some physical ailment? Why isn't it getting better? <laughs> I said, did you hear what you just said? You just said it's not working. Oh, no, I didn't say that. I said, yes, you did. You just said, why isn't it working? That's the same as saying it's not working. If you've been, my brother and sister, saying to your spouse in private, to your friends, I don't understand why it's not working. Now you understand why it's not working because you have to mix faith with the promises. You can't just bring God the tithe in obedience and expect it to work. You have to come saying, God, you said. Lift it up to Him and say, just like if this was it, when I write a paper check or if I'm doing it, digitally I hold up my checkbook and I say Father you said test you prove you put you to the test with this tithe and that you would open the windows of heaven I say now prove it to me you proved it last week but I'm asking you to prove it again this week you proved it last month but prove it again this month prove that your word is true say I wouldn't talk to God like that I'd be afraid not to talk to God like that because without faith God is not pleased with your obedience he's not pleased with anything you do if you do not do it in faith and that means you must be exposed Expecting his reward. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. How much more does he take pleasure in the prosperity of his sons and daughters? And yes, that includes material prosperity. And if you don't believe that, 
If you're listening to the prosperity critics and you think people like me are preaching heresy, that's fine. But God cannot bless your tithe or your offering, even though you're doing it in obedience, if you are not bringing it to Him in faith, expecting the windows of heaven to be open, expecting Him to pour out a blessing that there's not room enough to receive. And how does He know if you believe it? Because of the words that are coming out of your mouth. This is why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, God loves a cheerful giver because the cheerful giver, is it's evidence they're giving in faith. How can you give money away that you need? How can you give money away that you need and be cheerful? How can you bring God a tithe, the first tenth, you people in Africa? How can you bring God the first tenth when you need it to put food on your table? You need it to take care of your babies. You need it so you can go to university. And yet God still expects you to do it and expects you to be cheerful as you do it, to be happy. Bring the tithe. Don't bring in with those sad sack of tears coming down your eyes. Oh God, you know I need it, but I'm bringing it to you. There's no faith in that and there's no blessing. Where there's no faith, there's no blessing. I just heard the Lord say that inside of me. Where there's no faith, there is no blessing. Faith expects God's reward and if you expect His reward, you're going to be cheerful. And God loves a cheerful giver and tither because those are the only ones giving and tithing in faith. We are out of time. Can you believe it? Until next time, remember God wants you to prosper and be in health, my brother and sister, even as your soul prospers. Hello friend, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our Healthy Christian YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos, it's free to subscribe, and if you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new video. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites for our friends and partners for nutrition and wellness. We have mineraldoctor.com for weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's Word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week we hear from people and they're hungry for the Word of God and this is made possible through people just like you. The Bible teaches that we are to sow into the ministries that we receive from. So if you're receiving from this ministry, I want to invite you to become one of my partners. We have a video on our website called Becoming a Business Partner with God. The web address is richstocks.org. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. If you enjoy this teaching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For additional teachings by Rich Stocks and to help us send God's Word to others, visit our website at richstocks.org. You can also send your praise reports, prayer requests, and questions through our website. The website is richstocks.org. That's richstocks.org. Good and Coming down.